Hi, I'm Jonathan here at Martin Lynch and & Sons and today we're going to have a look at the Yaesu FTDX10 and the Icom IEC7300. Go over a few differences, go over what's similar uh, to help you make your mind up as to which one you might like to go for with your next radio purchase. Right, first we're going to have a look over the physical aspects of the two radios and I've got some notes written down in front of me. So we'll start with the FTDX10 which is 10.5 inches by 3.6 inches by 10.4 inches or if you like that's 266 by 91 by 263 millimetres weighing in at 13 pounds or 5.9 kilograms. Whereas the IC7300 is 9.45 inches by 3.7 inches by 9.37 inches, or if you want, that's 240 by 94 by 238 mil, uh, weighing in at 9.26 pounds or 4.2 kilograms. So FTDX10 is wider as well as deeper but it's about the same height as the, uh, the IC7300, as you can see there, and also weighs uh, over a kilogram more, almost two kilograms more. So it is a heavy radio in comparison to the IC7300. It's also worth noting that on both radios, uh, a carry handle is not included and is therefore an optional extra available for both, and we do keep them both in stock. Next, we're gonna have a look over the front panels of the two radios. And we'll start with the IC7300, which we can see has a rather nice color, 4.3 uh, inch or 110 millimeter screen. Uh, that's diagonally across. Uh, also has, of course, main tuning knob, uh, volume and RF gain and a squelch control there, as well as uh, the uh, contour and filter settings up there. Uh, moving over to the FTDX10, which has a 5-inch screen, which is about 125 millimeters. Uh, it uh, has got volume and RF uh, gain here. Uh, and more notably, Yezu, as they have done for many years, have got this as a, a sort of a dual control, which is switchable in the menu. So it'll either be RF gain or it'll be squelch. It won't be the same as it is on the uh, IC7300 and other ICOMs for that matter. Got down the left-hand side, we've got the, the power, the tune, uh, and the Vox button, as well as your headphones and microphone. Uh, we've got the function knob here, which is how you drive a lot of the radio's features, uh, as well as the main tune knob and the outer ring as well. And that outer ring can be set to be various different functions. For instance, you can have that to be a fine control. Uh, you could also set it to be controlling uh, the shift if you're, uh, if, if you're operating in RIT mode. Um, as well as a few other bits and pieces as well. Again, lots in, um, acceptable in the menu. And then on the very right-hand side, uh, we've got the shift and width and the notch and uh, filter there as well. Also, a big handy lock button just to prevent you moving off. Worth noting, both radios have an SD card slot in the front of them. Uh, the FTDX10 has it installed, so there we go. Uh, now, both radios on the at, uh, SD card is the way to uh, do firmware updates which is a new thing for uh, Yezu to do the firmware update via SD card, uh, as well as the place where any memories get stored, uh, as well as uh, the any off-the-air recordings, because both radios will record off-air, and also uh, the place where things like your CW and voice keying uh, goes as well. It's all stored on the SD card. So next we've turned the radios around so we can have a quick look at the back. Uh, we'll start with the IC7300 on our left hand side here. So everything on the back that you would normally expect. Obviously you've got your DC power input on that four pin connector which is fairly common now. Uh, grounding lug and an SO239. We have ICOM's uh, standard ATU interface which they've been using for the best part of 30 years or more. You find that connector on some really old radios as well as everything uh, modern. Obviously, large 100mm fan uh, in the middle. Uh, we also have uh, an ALC and a send line just there on phonos, as well as your key input for your, uh, for your CW key. And along the bottom, we have the 13-pin uh, accessory socket, uh, a USB connector, USB-B connector, uh, as well as a remote or CIV connector, and also the 3.5mm external speaker connector. And moving on to the FTDX10, we have the, almost the same fan module to be honest, 100mm fan. Uh, of course, we also have uh, the SO239 uh, antenna socket. Just the one on both radios, it is worth noting, which is a very common for radios about this price point. Uh, we have a six pin mini DIN 
uh, data socket. We have the eight pin mini DIN tuner. We have a DB9 uh, RS232 connector for serial comms, uh, as well as an accessory uh, socket. Uh, looks to also be 13 pins, but looks, I didn't actually count them, but it looks to be about the same. Uh, a grounding lug just there as well. And then on the right hand side of the fan, uh, we have a 3.5 minute REM socket. We have the uh, linear uh, socket on a 10 pin mini DIM. We also have 3.5 millimeter uh, external speaker. The DC input, again, that four pin uh, DC connector, which is very common now. Uh, again, the quarter inch uh, CW jack. Uh, we have the same USB-B connector for, for data comms and also rig control, as well as two, S two USB-A sockets. Now they are used for uh, plugging in a mouse and a keyboard. So you can use the FTDX10 uh, with a mouse if you wanted to control it like that and also keyboards for text entry for things like RITI and PSK uh, as well as an external uh, display output on a DVI-D socket uh, particularly useful if you want to hook the FTDX10 up to a large monitor uh, as we have done in one of our previous videos uh, we had the, the, the screen up on a, on a large monitor uh, particularly useful if you're maybe at a club station uh, or you just want to have a, a larger representation of the band scope a uh, very useful feature on the FTDX10, which is not present on the IC7300. So now we're gonna have a quick listen to how the radios sound. And it's worth bearing in mind that we have both radios out of the box. We've not plugged them into any external speaker. Now, obviously, if you do plug any radio into an external speaker, it will change the audio characteristics of how the radio actually sounds. So we've got both radios here as they are out of the box using their own internal speakers and doing nothing to the audio. Uh, so we're gonna look at uh, CW initially, and then we're gonna have a look at, um, at SSB in a little while. So we'll start off with the 7300, and as we have a tune around on CW, we'll have a listen to some of CW. So sounding very nice. And what we can also do in, in on the 7300 is use the, the bandwidth and shift in order to really hone in on the bandwidth. And you can get the bandwidth down if you go into the filter settings. We can press and hold the filter and really get the bandwidth right down, all the way down to 50 hertz. So if we move over to the FTDX10. Again, we can really hone in on the, on the width, again, right down to 50 hertz. And we've also got the option shifting as well. That option does exist on the 7300 as well. It's also worth bearing in mind that the FTDX10 has a CW decoder on board as well. Uh, the IC7300 doesn't. Both radios do decode on RTTY, and the FTDX10 will also decode uh, PSK31. So next, we're going to have a listen to the SSB performance, and also on this one, we'll, we're knocking uh, the noise reduction, have a play with that, so we can hear how each radio copes with a potentially noisy band. We haven't got the quietest of our locations here, so. We'll start with the FTDX10 and we'll turn up the volume and there was a station on this frequency calling CQ just a moment ago. While we wait for him to come back, let's have a little play with the noise reduction. So if we kick that in, we can see that the noise level comes right down. And by also playing with the RF gain and backing that off, we can see we're making the band very quiet indeed. Let's have a little quick tune around and see if I can find someone transmitting. Let's see someone up there. So you can hear the, the uh, digital noise reduction kicking in there in the algorithm. We can also change the level of that noise reduction by pressing holding. And we can then change the noise reduction level. Hotel Echo November Radio yesterday. Henry is the name, and my QTH is Lapua. I was spelled 
couple for you. L. London A. Alpha B. Papa Your uniform A. Alpha Papa. So that's the FTDX10. Let's try and just find the same signal on the IC7300. So we've got the same signal up on the 7300. If I play with the noise reduction here. You are five and nine. You had some QA spacers, but you are 59. A very, very good signal from station. Um, and again, as we did on the FTX, tell we can change the noise reduction level. So I hope that gives you some kind of idea of what they sound like. Obviously, we're relying on the microphone to pick up the speaker noise. Uh, they they probably sound a little bit better to, to my own ear uh, than through the microphone. Also, I want to have a quick talk about the scope options on each radio. Uh, the FTDX10 you can have in three different modes plus the uh, 3D effect. So we've got this fixed mode, which is showing us basically the entirety of the 20 meter band. So we can see right on the very left, we've got 14 megs up to 14.5. So the edge of the band being at 14.35 just there. And you can change what that span is. So the left hand side would always be 14 megs and you can change that span to be any number of options. Uh, by default, it normally sets itself to, to 200K. So as you can see 14, 14.2 uh, but uh, in order to get the whole band so that's 14.5 and then you can see the entire band plus a little bit above the 20 meter band the other options are to have it in the center mode so we're now seeing essentially a 250k either side of our center frequency and again we can change what that span is so again remember we're set to 500k but if you wanted to you could put that to 5k so now we're seeing two and a half k either side of the center frequency uh, and the other final option is the cursor mode which looks very similar except when you go to the edge it will the scope will follow you so the three modes of operation on the scope uh, and then you've also got the 3d mode so if we put it back to 500k and put it into 3d mode you can see that the 3d mode in the full effect uh, and you can also change its speed as so you want to do you can make that fast and you can see that the time goes back as it were uh, i personally prefer the, the standard waterfall mode but that's just my personal preference 7300 is very similar in, but you only have uh, two modes to play with you have the the fixed mode as we are at the moment uh, and we also have the center mode uh, again you can change what you see so we can change the span uh, and instead of it coming up as like an option it just cycles through them so that's 100k uh, across 50k either side of the center frequency and we've got 200k across 500k across uh, and then one mega cross. And it goes all the way down to 5K, is, is your narrowest you can do uh, in the center mode. And then with fixed, you can change what your band judges are. So we've set this, and this is actually how it comes default, to be 14 to 14.35, but you can change those. The other difference, of course, is with the 7300, you can also make the scope that little bit bigger by pressing the expand button, and then you can see the, the waterfall feeling much more of the display. With the, uh, with the FTDX10, it's a fixed height. The only other difference to bear in mind uh, is that you can do these multi-display uh, on both. Uh, by pressing multi on the uh, FTDX10, it brings up the oscillos oscilloscope and the FFT. Uh, with the uh, IC7300, if we press menu and then go audio, uh, and also press uh, M scope, we're gonna have a very similar display on both. So the final couple of things I want to mention about both radios are the fact that both radios have a set of 15 bandpass filters uh, on the receive side. Uh, and also both radios have internal ATUs as standard, which will each tune a roughly three to one mismatch, which is perfectly fine for bringing a dipole into frequency um, 
if you've got anything particularly non-resonant, maybe you're running a long wire or something like that, uh, you will probably want to consider an external tuner. Uh, LDG have options that will work with both radios. Uh, look at the website or call us for more information on those. In terms of some standard accessories from each manufacturer, you can very easily remote control both radios, uh, but you'll need an extra piece of either software or hardware in order to do that. With the IC7300, you will need the RSBA1 software and the RC28 remote encoder. They will cost you £269.95 at time of recording. Uh, and, and also a computer running locally in order to run. Uh, and the uh, S, uh, sorry, the FTDX10, you will need the SCU LAN 10, uh, which at time of recording is £279.95 and enables you to control the FTDX10 remotely. Also available for the IC7300, the external SP38 speaker and a choice of two desktop microphones, either the SM30 or the SM50. Uh, for the FTDX10, uh, you have the optional SP30 external speaker, and you also have a choice of two desktop microphones there, either the M100 or the M1, uh, all available from us here at Martin Lynch & Sons. So I really hope this video has been of use. Uh, obviously, there's far more features on, on both radios, but uh, very hard to, to squeeze them all into, into one video. Uh, if there's anything that you want us to go through in a little bit more depth, please do leave a comment or, or send us an email to sales at hamradio.co.uk and it's something I'm sure we could do in a future video. But for now, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.